In this video, we're looking at the quicksort algorithm in 13 programming languages. First of all, what is quicksort? Quicksort is a sorting algorithm that was invented in 1959 by Tony Hoare. Sorting is to rearrange the elements of a list such that they are in an increasing order. You can sort anything as long as you can define an order. So numbers is a classic case. We say that one is before two. For characters, we have defined an order of the characters, so for example, A is before C. And for strings, we use the order of the characters to order the strings. How does quicksort work? Now in this example, and on the running example, we're going to use a list of numbers. So take, take this uh, list of numbers here, which is an order. The first thing we do is to select something called the pivot. In the implementation we are looking at here, we select the pivot, we select the last element of the list as the pivot. So here we have chosen five. The next thing we do is to place all the numbers that are below the pivot at the beginning of the list. So for example here, if we run through the list, first we have a one, and then we have another one, we have a three, we have a zero, we have a four, we have a two, and then finally our pivot 5. Now the last three elements of the list are now above the pivot, above 5, 6, 9, and 8. So we have partitioned the list into two partitions. We can then call quicksort again on these two partitions or intervals. Now when we call quicksort on these intervals, this same process will occur again. And this will eventually sort the entire list in place. Now the way we're going to program this uh, algorithm in 13 programming languages is to use only those programming language constructs that are available in the list of thir 13 program programming languages you see here. So quicksort is a function. And the function takes a list. Now in, we are going to look at the quicksort algorithm for numbers. So it take a, takes a list of numbers, and it sorts the list in place. Now this uppermost function simply delegates the work to another function that takes uh, two bounds, the, up, the lower bound and the upper bound. For this upper call, we're only going, we are going to call the function with the lower and upper bound of the whole list. So the first parameter will be the list, the second parameter zero, and the third parameter nine in this case. Because the, because the list has nine elements. So let's look closer at this function. This function first checks if the lower bound is lower than the higher bound. If it is not the case, then there's nothing we can do. The operation does not really make sense. So we call three functions inside the if here. The first function is to partition the list and then we and to return the pivot. The next two functions is to call quicksort on these two partitions. First the lower partition and then the upper partition. So for a running example here, the pivot position is six. So the intervals become 0 to 5 and 6 to 9. And the result of running the entire function here is the sorted list, of course. Now this is the implementation of the partition function. The first thing the partition function does is to select the pivot. Now in this uh, implementation here, the we select the upper element to be the pivot. There are many other ways to select the pivots, which might be more efficient in some cases, but this is the way we do it in this implementation. The next thing we do is to set a variable called low position. Now, the low position will track the location of, uh, of the last lower element that we have placed into our list. So we start out at the bottom of the list. In this example here, uh, the bottom of the list is simply element zero. The loop with the J in it then loops through the entire list. 
if the element at position j is lower than the pivot, then we place this element at the lower at the low position variable, and we increase the low position variable by one. So this loop will, will place all the elements that are lower than the pivot on the lower end of the uh, of the list, and the rest of the list will be elements with a higher number than the pivot. Now the last function we need to complete this is a function that swaps the elements of the number array. So here we have two indices, the A indices index and the B index. And we have a list of numbers called A. So this function exchanges the uh, value at index A with the value at index B using the classic swap algorithm you see here. So here we have the function again, and we can see our running example here. Here is the unordered list on the left side, and the ordered list is on the right side. If we change any of the values, we can see that the uh, ordering changes immediately on the right side. Now the functions I showed were implemented in TypeScript, but let us look at the implementations in the other languages. So for this uppermost function, the implementations are very similar. The only two differences in these implementations is how the size, you can, how you get the size of the list, and how you specify the function itself. Apart from that, the implementations are very similar. Let's now look into this function. Here again, we can see our running example over here. And now we also have the indices down here. So this function is the main part of the quicksort uh, algorithm. It first performs the partition here, and then it performs quicksort on the two partitions here. Again, we can look at the different uh, languages, but again, they are even more similar than the last function. So let's now look at the partition function. And here are the different the implementations in the different languages. And finally, let's look at the implementation of the lowermost function, which again is very similar in the different languages. I'll post a link to this website uh, below the video. If you want to learn more about the quicksort algorithm, I recommend reading the Wikipedia page.